The scenario on this Hyundai is really, really bad in any direction you go. Let's get started. This is a 2016 Hyundai Sonata with a 2.4 liter inline four cylinder. It roughly has 100, 120,000 miles, somewhere around in there. They've had it to a dealer because the engine is knocking. There's supposedly maybe a recall or something going on with the engine. The dealer declined them and said, get your car out of my shop. You're not getting a dime. And I kind of understand why once we show you some of the things we found. This is a customer we've had for quite a while, one of our favorite customers. And this is her granddaughter's car. Started knocking, like I said, they brought it in, tried to do the dealership route, that didn't work. And the grandmother said, you know what, I use Omega, I trust them, let's take the car there and get kind of a skinny on what is really going on and what are really the options for this car. Not based on maximum profit, but based on what really are the options here. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing before we dive in. So here's the front of the Hyundai. Most new cars look like this anymore. This could be mistaken for a Mercedes-Benz, a Honda. They all look the same anymore. The hood is a little bit scuffed up and scratched, like maybe someone slid a box across the top or something, but otherwise it's in decent shape. As we get back to this rear driver's quarter panel, you can see it's been repainted right here. This is shiny and a little bit darker brown than the rest of the car. And the sad thing is, is I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's paint runs. Also, you can see the bumper is starting to pop loose on this thing. It's been impacted on this side. It definitely has been. And the paint is not too great on it, unfortunately. And around the back, it's a Hyundai. It's in decent shape on the back. As we go to the other side, I didn't find any dents or impacts or anything on the passenger side. So let's go ahead and look under the hood. So this isn't that old of a car and the hood struts are already failed. Based on what's wrong with it, I don't think they're going to want to replace those. So this is my handy dandy tool you guys have seen us on my Amazon affiliates page. It clamps on these hood struts, keeps from scratching the paint or anything like that. And you don't have to worry about damaging their strut because it's already dead. It's not rebuildable. So here we are with a 2.4 liter GDI engine. And unfortunately this one is toast. We did bring it in and drain the oil to see if there's any metal flakes or anything going on. And there was some metal in the oil. But I'm going to show you guys something that's very, very disheartening. So this engine should have four, four and a half quarts of oil in it. This is what it had in it. Half of a quart, maybe one quart. It smells bad and it is black like midnight. These engines are pretty junky to begin with and we'll get into that here in a minute. But that definitely didn't help their case with the recall that's going on with these engines. The dealer's always going to try to find a way out of it, and they definitely found one. It had a quart of oil in it. That is the easiest way out. You neglected this engine, you, you didn't do proper maintenance on it, get out of my shop. That's, it's, it's sad. Let me go ahead and start it up for you guys. When it's idling, it's not so bad. When we first brought it in, it was knocking like crazy. We did an oil change hoping maybe we might get lucky. We did not. Well, I'll rev it a few times and you guys can hear it. And guess what guys, me revving it doesn't hurt it any more than it already is. This engine is trash, doesn't matter. Before we dive in, I've got a lot of information to go over with you guys. This is, this is a lot to take in, and this scenario can happen to anyone, so you really need to watch this video and take heed. But before we dive in, let's let Mrs. Wizard show you around the interior 
and really how nice this car could be. There it is, ladies and gents, 116,000 miles. It's quite a few miles on here, but it shouldn't have had the engine fail like this, but that's another story. As we move up, the dash is in good shape, a little dusty. They've got a few baubles hanging there, but it's in good shape. They've got some blinged out air fresheners on each side. There's one on my side as well. We've got, you know, two-tone, kind of a taupe and a tan kind of trim. Looks nice. The seats are cloth with a decent little bolster on them. Got a nice smooth side and the center section is textured. A nice adjustable headrest as well. So everything's looking good so far. We do have a small infotainment system there. We've got some easy HVAC controls as well, but it's all looking really in good shape. The back seat looks absolutely impeccable. There's no smarks, no scuffs, nothing. It's in like almost brand new condition. Same thing with the headliner. No marks or anything, not sagging, no Cheeto fingers, nothing. It's all in you know, a whole sea of beige. As we enter our steering wheel, like we always do, again, nice controls, easy to use. All the buttons are nice, not anything scratched off because a fingernail is scratching on them from being pressed. So it's in a really, really good shape. But unfortunately, that engine is a huge problem. So as nice as this interior is, it's nothing compared to what we find under the hood. So as I've mentioned before in the past, people anymore, they just don't have to, we get really busy, we don't have time opening the hood, checking the oil, people just really aren't interested in that. Years ago it was almost expected, it was almost like you're an owner of a car, you should be doing this, shame on you, but the shame, it's no shame anymore. You know, you got this to get done, you got that to get done, kids to get to school, I mean, I don't have time for this. This is going to sell electric vehicles. I know some of you don't want to hear that, but this is happening more and more and more and more every year. People want to get in it and go. They don't want to worry about this. Today we expect our cars to let us know, hey, you're low on oil or this is happening. Something's really bad about to happen, but they don't. There may have been a low oil warning or oil pressure warning or something, but I don't know the full scenario there, but I know that the engine is now destroyed. So whatever fighting chance they had to try and claim on the recall is now no good. The dealer has physically seen that they ran it low on oil, and they have annotated it in their service records. Their hopes for a recall are gone. Now as sad as this situation is, it really sucks. The options make this even sadder and really, really, really bad. Are you guys ready for this? So we know we have to replace the engine. We're not going to rebuild it, and I'll explain why here in a minute. We call Powertrain Products, who we use always to get our engines from, our reman engines. And the guy almost laughed and said, there's no way we're even interested in rebuilding those engines. They are junk. We will not rebuild them, and we will never offer that service. I was like, what? Okay, so I called a couple other, I don't want to mention any names, a couple other engine rebuilders. Same story. Crazy D mentioned Hyundai 2.4, and the next word was, nope, nope, we don't touch those. The engines must be that bad that no one wants to rebuild them. If that's the case, I sure the hell don't want to rebuild it. So we looked around at some options for a used engine, and there are some out there, but we made one more call just to be sure. We called the dealer for a new long block, $5,500, almost $6,000 from the dealer, a new engine. And here's the kicker, here's the crazy thing. I have always used the information of dealer inventory, as far as the level of inventory they have, as a key indicator if it's a common problem or not. So Crazy D called them and said, do you guys have an engine we could buy? And they said, oh yes, we have 50 of them. He was like, what? 50? Yeah, they're in Texas. You can have one tomorrow if you want it. That tells me right there there's a problem. There's something going on. 50 engines in stock. So I started putting this data together. Three rebuilders said, hell no, we won't even touch it. The dealer has 50 in stock, and the final nail in the coffin for me was when the dealer said, 
we'll sell you the new engine, but we do not want your old one back as a core. Throw it in the trash. We don't want your core. That tells me they're not rebuildable. Four different vendors have all said to the idea of rebuilding this engine, nope, 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 and nope. Guess what I'm going to be, number five? Nope. I'm not touching it. Well, why don't you just put some bearings in it? After what I'm seeing, that is a bad call. This customer would put a lot of money into this engine. It would probably grenade in three to six months. I guarantee it. And it would be something else that failed because it ran out of oil. Who knows what other damage there is? So when an engine is run that low of oil where it starts knocking and starts making noises and the check engine light was on, it's actually smoking a little bit, that destroys the cylinder walls, the cam bearing surfaces, the crank bearings, the crankshaft itself very likely, the machine surfaces, any of the rotating moving pieces have been scored or overheated or damaged. And you just throw a set of bearings in there, that's a bad gamble. That's a really, really bad call. So I did the numbers. An engine, like I said, $5,500 to $6,000. That doesn't include even turning a bolt or doing anything on this car. That's just the price of the engine from the Hyundai dealer. Then I looked up the man hours on this. We're also going to flush the transmission and do several other things. If we're going to get a brand new engine, why don't we make this thing all ready to go? 25 hours of labor there. That's three grand at 120 an hour. So roughly 6,000 plus 3,000. And then there's going to be incidentals, oil, antifreeze, belts, all these different things. And the thing that no one ever thinks about, sales tax on almost 10 grand is going to be a grand by itself here in Kansas. An extra grand in sales tax. So to replace this engine is going to be nine to $10,000. I'm waiting to hear back from the customer. They're still deciding if they want to do this or not, and I really advise them not to. And the reason why is because I thought, okay, nine or 10 grand, it's a lot of money, but man, you know, this is a $20,000 car at least. I mean, it's a good 2016, it's in good shape. A newer model, a year newer, in good condition, similar miles, similar options. You can go buy it right now. I can call this person and buy this right now for nine grand. The car I just showed you there is 20 miles from this shop. I can go take nine grand and go buy it right now and replace this entire car for the same price as it's going to take to fix this car. And this one's been damaged in the back and repaired with paint flaws, a cracked windshield, scuffed up hood. This one's not worth nine grand. It's probably worth about seven. Really, it's a decent car. But the money doesn't add up in any direction that you take. There was one final direction that even I thought of. I'll buy the car from them and I'll fix it myself and then sell it for a profit. But after I realized no one rebuilds these engines, they refuse to. Their only option is a new one. I'm not putting a used one in here and do this again. It'll cost me at least six to seven grand. And I can go buy almost another car myself for that much money. Isn't that crazy, guys? This is a weird world we live in anymore. This is a decent car, and it's very likely going to go to the salvage yard. It is now mechanically totaled. It is junk. If a person was mechanically inclined and could rebuild engines themselves, maybe it might be a small chance that a person could rebuild this themselves and take the chance. Me as a professional shop is not going to take that chance because you're dealing with people's money. You, you know, there's a reason why these engines are not being rebuilt. Professional engine rebuilding shops are saying, hell no. I have to say hell no as well. This situation, I feel so bad, they're not going to get a bill. I'm not even going to charge them even 10 cents. I'm not going to charge them anything. This is a bad, bad scenario. Before it leaves or wherever it goes, I don't know what they're going to do with the car. I wanted to show you guys this scenario that this can happen to you. All you have to do is this. Yep, it's got oil in it. 
A lot of automakers now try to push these things to be eight and 10,000 mile oil changes, but that's dumb because this happens. Engines today use a little oil even specified by the factory. There should be this much oil usage between oil changes. There's supposed to be some oil usage. And if you skip an oil change, that oil usage doubles. Instead of using a half a quart, now it used a whole quart. And you skipped a third oil change, and now it used a quart and a half. And it adds up really, really fast. So this car is doom and gloom in all directions. Any option that you could ever think of is a dead end road, a brick wall. So I don't think we're going to fix it. Like I said, I'm going to advise them this is not a wise idea. Now it's easy to get mad at this customer or the owner of this car and start calling him names. Or Let's not do that, guys. Life gets in the way sometimes. You get really stressed, you get really busy, maybe there's some serious issues you're dealing with in life, illnesses, or who knows what's going on in your life, and you just don't think about the oil change. This can happen to you. It definitely can. So let's not do any bashing here. To help prevent this, you can set an alarm on your phone every two weeks. Go check the oil. And when it bings to check your oil, actually get up and go do it. Don't just say, yeah, okay, I'll get to it later. Then you probably won't. Over the course of last five years, I've probably been through this situation at least 10 times, and it's getting more and more and more. So if you're curious what kind of tools we're probably not going to use on this car, but definitely on the other cars in the shop, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. You can get one of these in there as well for the hood props. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's more cars scheduled, which means more videos for you. Thanks for watching. And go check your oil.